David with Hanson Carlin Architecture and Construction and today we're going to talk about furnace and heating systems in new homes. In this home here we have uh, more of a traditional heating system. This is going to be a heat pump system. The home here doesn't have natural gas available. We're in Green Bluff in Spokane County and there's no gas here. So when you don't have gas and you're gonna go with a traditional type of system, you wouldn't wanna use just electricity because it would be too expensive. When you don't have natural gas available, the way you can get more bang for your buck is using a heat pump system, which takes a little bit of electricity and gains a lot more BTUs than if you were to just have coil like baseboard heaters or something like that. In Spokane, this type of system has been used for years and it still is a good system. However, I think that as homes become more efficient that these systems are probably going to be used less and less because of the inefficiencies of running running heat all through these ducts. They say that uh, about 30% of the BTUs of the home is lost through the ducts. Picture that you that you're need heat in the upstairs bedroom. Well, this unit has to kick on. The fan has to blow hard enough to fill all these ducts to go upstairs and supply the air to those, those rooms up there. And so you can picture that um, a lot of uh, a lot of BTUs is lost by first of all getting the air moving and warming the ducts all the way to go into the upstairs of the home. When I started construction, cold air returns were often just run through a stud bay. But as things have become more efficient, now it's required that all cold air returns are ducted. And so here's an oval pipe to fit through. Um, a narrow wall where if we're getting a, a cold air return up to the upper floor of the house. This is a Mitsubishi outdoor unit. This is a, called a ductless mini split system or a ductless system. Well, ductless, of course, it speaks for itself. This system has no ducts. Well, how does it work? This works with an outdoor unit and individual heads and zones are parts of the house. Perhaps it's rooms or perhaps one head does several rooms. But this is another probably uh, up and coming way that homes are heated and cooled because it's so efficient. This unit's running right now. We're in the fall of the year and so it's blowing out cold air because it's taking warm the warmth that's in the atmosphere and it's creating it into heat and bringing it into the house. And it, instead of using ducts, uses refrigerant that goes to each head in each individual room. So you can see that it just clicked off here but the thing's almost noiseless when it's running. Right? Variable refrigerant flow is kind of described as a gas pedal of a car where you can just push it down just a little bit and it gives you a little heat if that's required or a little cooling or you can floorboard it or anywhere in between this unit will ramp up and turn on and go at a higher speed or lower speed and that's what makes them so efficient. So if you only need 10% capacity, that's all you're going to get is 10% capacity. Whereas a ducted unit, like the one that we just looked at, that has an outdoor unit too, but usually those are run off of only like two speeds, like 60% uh, and 100%. And so that air handler has to start up and get going and push all of that air. Whereas this can only turn on 10% and supply the amount of heat or cooling that's required for that amount of time. And that's neat. These units will uh, uh, don't have any ducts, of course, that's why they call them ductless. And how they supply the heating and cooling to the room is by running refrigerant lines. And this is a retrofit. So these, these pipes here were mounted exterior wise. Most of where we're building new construction, these would be mounted within the walls of the home to the various areas of the home. Said that uh, that um, the savings by getting rid of the ducts is about 30 percent because you can imagine the heat having to go or the cooling going through those large ducts takes a lot of energy just to heat or cool the, the ducts themselves. Whereas this, you're just running refrigerant to the particular zones. So that's really neat. These units are a SEER 30. They're um, considerably more efficient than an outdoor unit of a 
of a traditional system and so there's a lot of savings in these. Inside the house and I wanted to show you the indoor units. The indoor units can be sized to whatever room or space that you're heating. Perhaps if it's an open space you can do several spaces with these. In a lot of the passive house designs where the insulation is super high, you may only have one or two of these in a home. One of the disadvantages is some people think, well, I don't like that thing on the wall, and they think, well, that's, that's ugly. So that, that can be a disadvantage over a forest air system. But some of the advantages, besides the efficiency, is, is that these units are almost silent. They, comparing to a forest air system, you don't hear any fan or any starting up or any ducks going <clears throat> clang. So they're, they're nice for that. Uh, this unit here being the, is a Mitsubishi F FH unit and what's cool about this unit is, is it has this thing called the IC on it and then with the IC what, you, uh, what it can do is, is you can take the remote control and you can set it to direct or indirect so you can, uh, it can find where you are in the room and it can either direct heating or cooling so that you can feel the air movement or it will find it or it will indirect and make it so that you never feel the air moving. Uh, this unit can be controlled with a, a remote control. You can have it on several modes where it can uh, it can be act as a dehumidifier. The up and down and off and on is pretty much what you use, but it's full of all kinds of other settings too, like I was talking about, where direct or indirect or or timers or lots of different features on these remotes.